Hey guys, Mechanic CG here, and welcome back to another episode of Forza Motorsport 3. Today is episode number 110. If you want to help support the channel, then leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe, and feel free to check out the other videos in the Forza Mega Series. Now let's get into the content. This video was streamed live on Twitch. Come watch us live with the link in the description. If you want to get cheap game keys for Xbox, PlayStation or PC, then check out Enaba in the description down below. It's a shame we have to die, my dear. No one's getting out of here alive. Like, but... I, I love the idea that YouTube has. Um, oh, my speakers died. Lovely. Well, at least everything else is working fine. I'll sort that out in a minute. Um, I love what YouTube has done with YouTube Premium, and I wish Twitch would... I think Twitch actually does have, like, Twitch Turbo, but it doesn't work the same as Premium. So, Twitch... If I'm not mistaken, Twitch Turbo gets rid of all adverts, but the only thing is that none of that revenue actually goes to a creator. It's just to get rid of adverts off of the platform. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's a stupid one. Is that Ferrari Evo R34 1.9 TDI? Yes, it is. <laughs> um... What is it? Uh, I'm trying to think where I was. Yeah, the way YouTube does uh, YouTube Premium is it just gets rid of all adverts. And um, will divvy up your watch time. Into like YouTube Premium. Revenue. Um, I'm not sure how it works. Whether it's based off of how many ads that you would have watched. They then sort of calculate it that way. Or whether they... Just do it based off of watch time. So if you watch like 10 hours of YouTube videos, they'll basically split like half of your subscription towards the videos that you watched based on how long you watch them for. I assume the latter would be um, the one that makes the most sense because then you're directly supporting the videos that you're watching fairly, but... I mean, no matter how it works, YouTube, if you pay YouTube to get rid of the adverts, you're still supporting creators, which is a great idea. Absolutely love it. Um, the only thing I wish that YouTube would do is give you, like, a free channel membership so that people who do have YouTube Premium, because they used to do it. They used to do it every so often. Um, but they've literally done it like once or twice and not done it again. Like, I really think they should, for that £12 a month, even if it doesn't work for family accounts and they only have like, for the family accounts, they only let one person redeem that channel membership, at least let people have like a free channel membership to any YouTube channel to help support the channels even further. Like, it's a brilliant idea. But how YouTube does it is still really good. Um, I mean, Twitch, how it does ads is slightly different. Because it feeds the adverts into the actual Twitch stream. Um, I'm not 100% sure how Twitch Mobile works, so I don't think it works the same. So, on mobile, that's probably why Zeno doesn't have the adverts. Um, but when it comes to Twitch, I think it's just integrated straight into the video stream. Which I think uh, Twitch should do, at least, because that forces people um, who have an ad blocker to still watch the ads because they can't avoid that. The only way they avoid it is by um you know, not watching the stream. I'd much rather Twitch cut the video feed and run an advert over it than them just place over a video that sometimes works and sometimes doesn't, you know. I don't know.
I mean, I watch a lot of YouTube content and I make a lot of YouTube content, so I understand both sides of the coins. Yeah, you can skip the ads. Just turn the browser off and turn it back on again. But if you've got the adverts, um, as soon as the advert loads, I'm pretty sure um, you get paid for that. So by all means, skipping the advert, do it. I'm 99% sure you still get paid for that. <coughs> but the thing is, right, Twitch and YouTube and that won't put as much effort into um, countering ad blockers because they won't pay on behalf of lost revenue to creators. So if you use an ad block, both the creator and YouTube take the hit. So the creator doesn't get revenue, YouTube doesn't get revenue. So YouTube is just like, ah, here's how much revenue we're getting. If YouTube started to do, um, oh, so this person's watched this video for 37 minutes. We haven't got any money for them watching ads because they didn't watch the ads, they used ad block. We'll still pay the creator the money for those views. If YouTube started doing that, they'd crack down a lot more on adblock, guaranteed. But they don't do that. That's why, um, uh, what's it? Revenue per thousand views fluctuates so dramatically because it is based on who's using adblock, who's paying for the adverts. There's so many different variables. Um, who's on older technology that adverts don't work for. There's so many variables when it comes to working out um, how much revenue you should be getting per thousand views that it's just difficult to calculate. It's very difficult to calculate. Um, I would like to see Twitch and YouTube to clamp, crack down, clamp down on because uh, it is piracy. At the end of the day, using an ad block is piracy. Um, oh, fuck. That didn't go well. A lot of people obviously don't associate because they think piracy is just, ah, I've just stolen this software that co should have cost me money, but I got it for free. That's piracy. But technically speaking, that exact logic is what goes on with adblock because adverts are what's paying for you to be able to use YouTube and if you're getting rid of those adverts you're basically getting a software for free piracy sound familiar you know and I mean all I've got to do is reiterate really the words that Linus Tech Tips says. Or Linus Sebastian from Linus Tech Tips. All I gotta do is reiterate what he says that if you're um what's it called? If you're going to pirate software, think of the consequences before you do it. Um and he obviously says if a software is not available for you to purchase anymore, there's no way for you to buy it. For example, Super Mario 64, or, I don't know, Forza Motorsport 3. Then, he agrees, piracy for that should be legal. It's, there's not really anything morally wrong for that piracy. And, I, I will agree. Because the consequences for you pirating Forza Motorsport 3, for example, well, Forza's not earning any money from it. There's no companies that will earn any money from it. Um, resellers don't really count because they're just making money off of other people's work. So, by all means, piracy, yeah, fair enough. Um, but when you think, if you pirate YouTube, again, I know it sounds strange saying that, a free software? That can't be pirated. It can. Because you're not lit paying for to use YouTube. You're just getting it for free. The payment is to watch some ads, basically, to YouTube. Um, Arr, I'm captain of this pirate ship. 
Yeah. But when you look at the consequences and the scale of the consequences for pirating YouTube, sure. You, uh, Google doesn't get the money from you watching their video or watching a video. It might not be theirs. It might be someone else's. They don't get the money for your view. Eh, that's fair enough. Maybe that doesn't seem that bad to pirate it then. Not really losing much, am I? YouTube isn't losing much. But who is losing much is the creator. Because that's... Again, a majority of the ad revenue goes to the creator on YouTube. Not um, YouTube. So I don't think I can say what the exact percentage is. But I, I will say more money goes to the creator than it goes to YouTube. And like... Oh yeah, 103 hours playtime. It's fucking ridiculous. This game is long. <coughs> this game's probably longer than Motorsport 1 and 2 combined at this rate, let's be honest. Madness. The game is longer than my schlong. Very nice. I appreciate it, Cotto. Legend. So yeah. Pretty um, pretty straightforward when you think about it. Like I know piracy, when it when it comes to piracy, it's more the people that distribute that get caught out by these big companies more than individual users. So governments don't really focus on one individual that's downloaded a lot of pirated software they more focus on the people distributing it because that's the easiest way to cut it off and that makes sense but I really think they need to clamp down on here's the thing I, th I really think the EU should look at opening up like uh, changing some of the piracy laws in the UK because I think I think games that or like software that is unable to be sold um, so software that just doesn't go on sale anymore because licenses have run out or whatever that shouldn't come under piracy laws anymore I think those kind of software should be classed as abandonware and you should be allowed you shouldn't be allowed to charge for it because that's still someone else's intellectual property but I think you should be able to like get the game because I mean it's history at the end of the day when you think of it like there are PSP games that I yeah I'll have a look um, afterwards thank you thank you Hans have a look see what there is if I like them and they're on Tidal. I'll use them. But yeah, like, there are PSP games, like, racing games on the PSP that I absolutely fucking loved. That, um, just, you can't buy. So you have to buy either off of eBay or whatnot, and it's just an absolute pain in the ass. I think for circumstances like that, it should be legal. Um, obviously, that doesn't mean it is, but it should be. Yo, Blackout, what up? Yeah, Project Cars 3 was dead as soon as it launched. Um, they basically made a game with the title, Project Cars. Um, basically said it was a successor to the previous game. And then just fucking gave up on it. And they advertised it pretty much to Project Cars fans. If you make a Project Cars game, it's going to be aimed towards the fans of the last game. And also, potentially some new people. The only people that really bought Project Cars 3 were people who have never played Project Cars 1 or 2. And the people who did buy it, that did play 2, didn't like it most of the time. Project Cars 2... 3 was an absolute fucking flop. Project Cars 2 was amazing though. 
Yeah, it's pretty much Need for Speed Shift 3. And when you make that comparison, and you, like, I went back and played Shift 1, the handling model was fairly similar. Um, I have no clue. I know they're the same studio, slightly mad studios. I know it's the same studio that made Need for Speed Shift, but I don't know how Slightly Mad Studios went from a simulation handling model that was really enjoyable to basically going back to the drawing board, dusting off their copy of Need for Speed Shift 2 and just copy and paste that into a new Project Cars game. I don't know how they managed that. Because that's literally what they did. Uh, I've been pretty good. Uh, I've moved since we last spoke, I believe. It's been a, about a month or two in it. So, I've moved. I'm in a different house. Um, in a different country, technically. <laughs> so, uh, I'm also very ill at the moment. My nose is fucked. My throat is fucked. But hopefully by next... Well, I was going to say next Monday, but that's tomorrow. And I doubt I'll be better tomorrow. But hopefully by, like, Wednesday, this cold will have fucked off. Whatever it is. It's not COVID, though. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, pretty much. This is now Mech 2.0. Woohoo! Oh, for fuck's sake. Hey, fair enough. I, um, just haven't bothered with GTA still. Um, I don't think I'm ever going to play GTA 5 ever again. Just because I've played so much of it. I've... I don't have the urge to play any more Grand Theft Auto 5. Um, I do want to play GTA 4 though, because I've never played it before. Haha, <laughs> pun intended. But yeah, I, I, I think GTA 5's in the bin for me. I don't think I'm ever going to play it again. Late 5 Audis to see. Not bad. Not bad. Are you adding the uh, Hoonatron? That new Audi that Ken Block has. That thing would be fucking awesome, to be honest. And the S1 Quattro needs to be in there as well. If the S1 Quattro isn't there, then you may as well not bother with Audi. corner there um yeah I mean I do need to finish Red Dead 2 on PC but I'm planning on downloading that on my Steam Deck and seeing how well it runs on there I did my Steam Deck upgrade I think I explained that in the last stream but I've upgraded my Steam Deck it's now got a 256 gigabyte NVMe SSD which means actually the loading time is slightly quicker on it NVMe. Um, there are a couple of games that... Uh, it's really weird, because I don't know how the Steam Deck uses these drives. 
but NVMe drives don't perform as NVMe's. Um, I've played Fallout 4 on my PC with what is quite frankly a fairly slow NVMe SSD. But it runs at, I think it's like... Eh. That sounds very wrong, hands. <laughs> I mean, when you... Oh, shit. That's not good. Um, when you compare it to my NVMe SSD that's in my PC, that thing is... I'm not sure what the write speed is, but I think the load speed... The read speed is 3,000 megabytes a second, which is pretty good. It's perfect for video editing because my files are too big for a hard drive. They take forever to load, um, but off of the SSD, they're brilliant. <laughs> Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. But yeah, when I load Fallout 4 on the SSD in my PC with high texture packs, so high quality, maximum resolution texture, texture packs, which bumps the game file size from like 36 gigabytes all the way up to 97 when you run the higher quality textures. So it's got a lot more to load, but the loading time of that on an SSD for that game is still so much quicker than on the Steam Deck with the lower quality textures of the standard game. It's a really strange thing. Um, it's odd how they do it. That's all I can say. It's, it's odd. Um, because the Steam, the Steam Deck doesn't use NVMe SSDs correctly. Um... That is the one thing I, do, I don't like about the Steam Deck. Along with the micro SD card slot being pretty much exposed. So you end up burning yourself on the micro SD card. It should be that the NVMe SSD, like the hardware is, faster than a hard drive. The NVMe SSD in the Steam Deck should be faster than a hard drive. It's not. The SD card in the Steam Decks all pretty much run at similar transfer speeds that high speed hard drives have. Like 3.0 hard drives. And it's a pretty similar story to the NVMe drives. The NVMe drives probably have an extra like 2% of performance. I think it shaved about two seconds off of the loading time on Fallout 4, running it off the NVMe, than the micro SD card for the Steam Deck, which just isn't the kind of difference you would expect from running something that is tiny and runs at a similar performance to a hard drive to something that should quite easily be very fucking fast. It's a very weird one. Very strange. There we go, cross the line. I think we've got one more race, which is the Bugatti circuit. Uh, oh, I thought the game actually just straight up crashed then. So I would probably recommend, um, instead of getting two four terabyte SSDs, because let's be honest, you are not installing four terabytes of games and having that all at the same time. To get an eight terabyte hard drive or a four terabyte hard drive and save yourself some money and use one at a time because I, I doubt GTA even though you're running like custom servers and stuff like that I doubt it is going to be anywhere near I mean a set of Corsa when you've got loads of cars and loads of racetracks doesn't even get close to a terabyte GTA will not get that big so, and if it does, then whoever's developing the mods for GTA is very bad because they are not very optimized. But 
So you're looking for 64 gigs of RAM. Uh, that's not bad. Um, I don't think... S <sighs> when it comes to gaming, I don't think you, people need any more than 16 unless they're doing something like BMMG or simulation physics. In which case you might need 32, but any more than 32 is like not necessary for gaming. Like, even the Steam Deck only comes with 16 gigs, which is actually kind of surprising. That's the one thing that it has. It would be 128 gigs, by the way, hands, not 124. <laughs> yeah, I mean, your, your PC, what you started out with, is pretty decent. So what you're upgrading to is pretty good, but you got to think you're upgrading only to a 1660, which is, it is a good graphics card. But in terms of graphics capability, probably won't need 32 gigabytes of RAM. I'm bad at meth. <laughs> I'm bad at meth. I've been snores. Actually, how did you take crystal there? <laughs> I don't even know. I might have just... <laughs> Ow. Oh, that was a terrible joke. For fuck's sake. Ow, that really hurt. Ouch. But yeah. I mean, if you're getting 32 gigs with the intention of upgrading to like a 30 series or a 40 series, then yeah, maybe. But a 1660, I, I don't think you need even 32 gigs. Um, I think you'd be better off maybe buying a kit of 2x8 and then getting another 2x8 later on down the line to upgrade to 32. Um, my PC's only actually got two, um, two DIMM slots, so I actually need to completely replace my RAM if I want to upgrade. I've got 16 gigs at the moment, but I do want to upgrade to 32. Because uh, that's the only other option, is if you're doing like video editing or photo editing, that's where RAM, more RAM actually does come into play. Um, so you've only got two DIMM slots as well, Hans? My, mine's actually like a smaller motherboard, so it's only got two DIMM slots on it, so I have to take them out, replace them with two new things. I do have slots in the back of my PC for, uh, what's it called, SSDs, so I may end up looking at getting a 4TB SSD, or a, I might get a 2TB SSD um, specifically for like just games. But I might see what CEX has. See if they've got any good quality ones. Well, no. So, I wouldn't be able to go that big. Because it's just too much money and it's pointless. <coughs> if I was, um, say for example, storing a lot of games... I would just use my archive drive to store the games that I'm not playing, but I might want to use again in the future that I didn't want to reinstall. Because to transfer from a hard drive to an SSD is about 10, 12, 15 times faster than on what's on my internet at the moment. Obviously, for people that have gigabit internet, transferring from an SSD to a hard drive is practically pointless. Because if you've got gigabit internet and you get a gigabit download speed, then you may as well just straight up download it from Steam and say, fuck it. Like, just delete and reinstall every single time. Because the speed that it will download at is exactly the same as the speed it will transfer off of a hard drive. Um, but that's very expensive for that kind of internet. So, I doubt people, like normal people, will end up 
having something like that. Um, but yeah, it's it, it's it's difficult one. I do know that my NVMe slot is only ever going to have a one terabyte drive because even though it's high speed it's I'm always going to buy a cheaper version of that drive because I'm going to be constantly storing and removing stuff off of that which does wear down SSDs SSD storage is not designed for constantly like downloading and deleting because they wear out quicker then they'll wear out quicker than a hard drive if you keep doing that and that's not just due to the download speed, like... I think a one terabyte SSD, the one that I've got, allows me to write about 100 terabytes of data before it starts malfunctioning. Which means I can fill it, delete it, and fill it again 100 times. Um, so when it comes to me editing, and like transferring big footage files, I, I doubt that my NVMe SSD will last more than year and a half two years if it, if it lasts more than two years then I've got my money's worth out of it definitely but that one is basically like a throwaway drive even though it's like necessary it's one that I know I'm going to wear out and it's going to get used like I know the warranties are like five years for it but if you actually write enough data to the drive that you wear out its endurance, it voids the warranty anyways, because it's done its life cycle. That's the one thing with SSDs. I, a lot of people that buy SSDs don't realize that the warranty is slightly different for an SSD than a hard drive, because it has write endurance. Um, and basically, once you've written to an SSD so many times, it, it dies. The SSD no longer functions. That's that's one of the things I'm very scared about with the PS5, to be honest. Um, because of the fact that the SSD used in it is soldered to the PS5. So, if that SSD goes, what happens to the console? There hasn't been a lot of like people having problems with their PS5s with that. And it's been two years, but potentially next year we might, if that write endurance isn't great and people are like downloading different games, downloading lots of updates, deleting, reinstalling, we might see people actually having problems with their PS5s and like they stop working just straight up, which would be disappointing. Because, again, the Xbox Series consoles, you can just straight up swap the SSD. Um, I know you have to do some funky stuff. Um, but it is possible you can swap the SSD and the console will still work. PS5, that's not possible, really. Um, it would be cool to see... Sony maybe add in, like... An update that allows you to download the operating system to the external drive that you plug in. So that maybe if the SSD blows on the internal one, you can still use your system and use an external drive. It would be a good workaround. You just have to reinstall the operating system and rework it all out. But... You know, it's all down to what Sony do. I think that would be a good feature for them to add to save their asses a little bit. Because especially if you can buy a one terabyte SSD and then run the operating system off that. If the system dies because of that, the soldered on SSD, at least people can still use their systems. It's a very... Um, It's a uh, we've got a wait and see situation. See what happens with these consoles. So far, there haven't been many problems, though. So, I doubt it's going to get any 
any bad that I doubt it's gonna get bad. But it could be a pretty expensive oversight if, say, it, five years from when the console comes out, people are just having consoles die. Because the SSDs just aren't up for it and people can't use their system because of one small chip. It could be a problem that bites Sony on the ass. Especially when Microsoft as a company have made it that you can swap out the SSD. <laughs> so, I don't know. We just gotta wait and see. Yeah, but when you think about it, like the PS5, even though it's got a CD drive, um, it won't survive any longer than a digital one because it's, it still runs the same. It still downloads to an SSD and all that. It's stupid. Stupid. Fucking stupid. Alright, let's go on to the next one. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, comment down below and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.